This entry level HF radio cost a thousand dollars. This high end HF radio cost upwards of eight thousand dollars. What's the difference? And how do you know how much radio you need? This time on K6 UDA Radio. It's the age old question. How much is too much and how much do I need? Well, this time on K6UDA Radio, I'm going to dive into the similarities and the differences between an entry level radio that I have here and this one behind me, the K3S with all the trimmings. Um, there. The first thing that you need to understand when you're shopping for that HF radio, that perfect HF radio for you, I'll tell you, this ICOM 7300 is amazing for, for the price and what it does. I mean, it is a real SDR radio in every sense of the word. Um, it is it is digital uh, digital processing. It is not an old style superhead uh, radio with a fancy front end. It is genuinely SDR, which uh, is by all accounts the way that everybody is going in the future. And with SDR, it has some very highly configurable filters. So if you are the average casual HF user, which almost everybody starts out as, and that is where this radio excels and will take you there and beyond, but it does lack some of the features that a high-end radio has sometimes built in or available for it. And, and that's, what we're going to talk about. Now this 7300 uh, has all the basic features that you're going to want in a uh, HF radio, in a basic HF radio. The biggest thing is uh, a single SO239 for connecting one antenna. It also has inputs for an external tuner, ALC, Ascend, uh, the key, an accessory port, USB input, uh, set up for a remote, and an external speaker, along with a good size fan. Now my K3S, on the other hand, uh, is equipped or can come equipped with up to three antennas plus an auxiliary listening antenna input, uh, 12 volt outgoing uh, power, uh, all kinds of stuff in the back, dedicated ports for a P3, uh, that's the pan adapter, uh, transverter outputs and inputs, uh, receive antenna inputs and outputs, keyers plus paddles, PTT in buttons for remote PTTs, two nice size fans to keep everything cool, it's actually much more radio than I'm currently using. Now, add in all the, uh, the made for accessories for the, uh, for the Elecraft system or what they call the K-Line, including the P3 pan adapter, which is super, super configurable, much more so than you get with the, uh, with the 7300. Now, while the 7300 does allow you to add an amplifier, the, uh, the Elecraft K-Line in this case uh, has an Elecraft amplifier. This is a 500 watt amp. You could get a 1500 watt amp in the same form factor and an external antenna tuner that literally will tune a fence. All of this stuff is made to go together and it works seamlessly as if it was just on the radio. Now this screen on the IC7300 
is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, this is first class, high end radio, uh, front end and quality in a budget radio. Uh, the top of my screen uh, shows my uh, my frequency. I have a mini waterfall in there. I have an audio scope that shows me waveform and a spectrum audio scope on the other side. Did I mention that this is a touch screen? Yeah, uh, you can do almost all of the functions from this radio from within this touch screen. You can uh, change your scope from a center to a fixed. The center will give you the entire band scope uh, or the fixed will. The center will center that up and then you can decide how big you want your, your waveform, whether you want it to be uh, 10 kilohertz wide either end or 500 kilohertz wide either end. You can uh, you could go ahead and do that in the fixed mode. It's going to show you the entire band. A quick press of that audio scope brings the uh, audio scope back up, and it is very very easy to make those corrections or those adjustments. Now the 7300 also gives you the option of recording voice messages for calling CQ. This is really handy on field day. The setup menu is rather limited. Uh, this, this is one of the places where a budget radio kind of falls short. It gives you some functions, but it doesn't allow you to really dig into the radio and do a lot of the stuff that you can with, uh, say, the K3 or one of the other uh, high-end radios. Now the K3S on the other hand uh, when you get into that menu and that configuration menu uh, gives you an entire suite. You can virtually control every single aspect of the radio from this menu. Uh, there is a ton of stuff that this does and it allows you uh, complete control over every single aspect of the radio. For a beginner in HF, for a beginner into uh, getting your feet wet, this is overwhelming. I mean, I don't know how to use a lot of this stuff in here, uh, but I do have the ability to learn how to do it. Now the main menu on the K3S gives me the ability to change bias for different types of microphones. I could pick uh, if I want line plus mics. I have multiple EQs uh, that I can adjust for both transmit and receive. That is a huge, huge deal uh, when it comes to serious DXing and contesting. That kind of control over your set is something you just don't get at the $1,000 price point. Now another big thing uh, when you get serious about this is the ability to hook up multiple antennas and be able to switch those antennas automatically. To save a few bucks, I configured mine simply because I'm using the external tuner. Now a budget radio is going to give you less options and when you get serious about DXing or contesting, it does make a difference. Now, like most of us, I didn't start out with an Elecraft KX3 and a K3S, no. I started off with, the, uh, with an older Yaesu 897 and, uh, and I didn't like the tiny little display that the 897 had. So I moved into an ICOM 9100. And then the 9100 turned into an ICOM 7600. And then I kind of fell into the Elecraft radio when my uncle decided he was going to get rid of that. 
and he gave me a smoking deal on it. Otherwise, I would have never bought that radio. I would have never been able to afford to buy that radio. Now, one of the other differences that you're going to see between a budget radio and a high-end radio is the receiver. Now, up until, oh, I would say two weeks ago, when Yesu announced the new uh, FT-101 HD, the Yellowcraft uh, K3 and the KX3 held the very top slot as far as receiver sensitivity. No more. They have been bumped by the Yesu. Uh, so there is a another, there's another kind of a check mark if you want to start getting serious about uh, HF, about chasing DX and those rare stations that you just can't hear with uh, a lower end radio. It, they're just going to be kind of down in the mud and you might not be able to pull them out where these high end radios, yes, you're going to pay the money, but if you're serious about getting every dime out of that radio, um, you're gonna end up starting to spend a little bit incrementally, a little bit more money. Now I mentioned before about multiple antenna inputs and where this comes into, uh, into real play is when you get serious about DXing or contesting or you're going on D expeditions and you're using resonant antennas and I can't stress the uh, the benefit of using a resonant antenna as opposed to relying on an antenna tuner. What an antenna tuner does is it fools your radio into thinking that everything is resonant. In the meantime, you're losing power every time you transmit you're losing a little bit uh, it's coming back at the radio the antenna and tu the antenna tuner is absorbing that so you don't really see it on your end but the tuner does see it because the antenna is not performing the way it absolutely could having multiple inputs allows you to use multiple resonant antennas built and designed for the band that you're operating. So I have an 80 meter inverted V that I use for 80 meters and 40 meters. And then when I switch to 20 meters, I'm using a hex beam. I've also got the option of putting, say, a, uh, a receive loop or a delta loop up for receive only because those antennas are marginal at best on transmit. Say a large delta loop is unbelievable on the listening end. The K3 is capable of receiving on that delta loop, that big long delta loop that can be a thousand feet in diameter and getting you the very, very best reception possible and then automatically switching right over to one of my transmit antennas either the uh, the inverted V or the hex beam or whatever you happen to be using if we were talking about some of the older budget radios that you could pick up now yes they can be very good for starting out but Honestly, uh, at the price point that a lot of guys want, five, six, seven hundred dollars, you could pick up a used 7300 or say the, uh, the Yesu 991A and get so much more radio for your money. I, it's hard for me to, uh, to preach to the choir to buy one of the older radios. It just really is. Another feature that you'll be missing in that budget radio with the single VFO is the ability to monitor two bands at one time. Like the K4, the, uh, the Yesu uh, FT-101 HD, 
the ICOM 7610, the Kenwood 990, all those high-end radios give you the ability to have a second receiver, a totally separate radio within the radio. And that means that during a contest, you could be working 40 meters on one side and have, say, 20 meters on the other side and to instantaneously switch from one to the other. Did you like this video? Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We'll be back to show you more. Get it? Back? All right, guys, I think I've taken up about enough of your time today. Please consider supporting me on either Patreon or PayPal or, hey, uh, you could send me gifts. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm out of here. I'm Bob, K6UDA. 7-3, my friends.